read from Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up to you. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you because we have you as the most high God, higher than our situation and circumstances, higher than the challenges of life. Thank you, Father, because when we lift our voice unto you, you are there for us always. Once again, we are gathered this morning, O God. Father, we ask that you hear our voice in the name of Jesus. Lord, in hearing, you will hear us. And as you hear us, you will answer us. We will all depart this place with the assurance of your mighty power at work in our lives. Thank you, our beautiful king. We bless your wonderful name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we lift our voice and praise God and give him thanks? Exalt his holy name. There is none like him. Give him praise. Thank him for the privilege of being in his presence once again. Thank him for this first Sunday in the month of April, the second quarter. Lift up your voice and say, Father, I thank you. Lord, I bless your name, O oh God, because I know I'm in for a great time. I'm in for an experience. I'm in for an encounter. Lift up your voice and give him praise. Exalt his holy name. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We adore you. Blessed be God forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his stars when it rose, and we have come to worship him. Can you pray along with me and say, My father and my maker, my glory shall not be hidden. In this second quarter, I will shine forth. Lift up your voice and pray. My glory shall not be hidden. In the second quarter, Lord, I will not become obscured. Father, my glory will shine forth. Lord, you will enlarge my capacity. No man, no woman will be able to ignore me. In this second quarter, I will burst forth. Is somebody praying and asking God? Oh, my Father, you will reveal, yes, that hidden glory, that hidden endowment. Father, it will blossom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Can you also pray again, my Father and my Maker? The grace upon my life will become known to men that they will seek me to lift me up. Lift up your voice and pray. That which the Lord has endowed you with will not be hidden. Men will seek after it. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, they will look for me to announce me. <laughs> Somebody praying this morning. Lord, it will not be hidden. I will be announced. I will be announced. I will be announced. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can you also pray, Heavenly Father, that which you have endowed me with, it will blossom and flourish. In this season of flourishing, it will blossom and flourish. Open your mouth. You, are, you have been gifted. You have been endowed. It is time for it to flourish. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we we'll pray. Can you also pray, my Father and my Maker? Every star hunter, 
every destiny hunter, they will not see my glory in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. The glory, the star of Jesus could not be hidden. They will not see my glory. They will not hunt me down in the name of Jesus. That which you have endowed with it will not be taken away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father. Oh, rush, rush, rope, de de busha, kadabara. Leprodos, kimpali, and dodos, and take a liberal, siya da da da. Oh, Lord, my star will shine forth. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you also pray, Heavenly Father? As the star guided the wise men, in that same order, let men of means be guided unto me to offer my destiny help. Open your mouth and pray. Ask that men of means, men that hold the key, the doors of the city, will be guided to locate you. They will be guided to help you. In this season, you need a man. Father, we thank you. Let my destiny help us locate me. Let my destiny help us locate me. In the name of Jesus, let my destiny help us locate me. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you also pray that, Father, in this service, give me an experience. Let your word locate me. Let my situation experience a turnaround for the best. Open your mouth and pray. Ask that the Lord, by the reason of the word, in this service, will locate your situation. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. It's another communion service. I want you to pray, Heavenly Father. Let the efficacy of the blood speak concerning my situation. The blood can bring my deliverance. It can bring my breakthrough. It can bring about my lifting. Ask that the efficacy of the blood will speak for you this day. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our faithful Father, we thank you. Thank you because today is another day in which, without restriction, you will move mightily in our midst. You will cause men to experience heaven here on earth, and there shall be an encounter with you. Thank you, our faithful Father, for the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Hallelujah. Just keep worshiping the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
was patient till I came running back into his head. Oh, see how he turned my life around, made me a shining star. His glory to reveal. I will worship. I will worship.
the Lord our God is mighty. He's full of grace and mercy. He's giving us his son Emmanuel. Atonement for love of A gift to set us all free. Let me hear you. Worship in the name of the Lord. Just wave those hands to him. Wave those hands to him. He's worthy to be praised. We call you Emila. We lift your name highly exalted, O oh Lord. We lift your name highly exalted, O oh Lord. When I think upon your goodness. And your faithfulness each day I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy To receive this kind of love that you gave Lord, I'm grateful for you I'm grateful for your grace And because of how you poured out yourself And I have come to sing the song out in praise Amen
worship you, God. song, oh Jesus. I can never sing your song. Lift your name high. Not a sacrifice on Calvary's tree. You are the reason. You are, you are the worship the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord.
let me hear that. Email, let me hear you see. Shall be taking our hymn this morning, blessed assurance.
for our situation thank you because you did not gather us in vain thank you for your mighty presence that is here thank you because we know that you are here to do us good father we give you praise as we go into your word father speak to me speak to your people let the potency of your word be made manifest thank you for healing Thank you for restoration. Thank you for elevation. Thank you for giving us direction. We bless your name, O oh God. We give you praise. We say, Father, have your way in this service. Do what only you can do in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you're with your Bible, please open to Colossians chapter 3. The epistle of Paul to the Colossians chapter 3. I read verses 18 and 19. Colossians chapter 3, 18 and 19. I read from the NIV version, and it reads, Wives, submit to your own husband as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and cause our life to be imparted by this word in Jesus' name. I count it a great privilege to stand here this morning to bring the word of God unto us. I want to thank God for our lead pastor, who is currently in Kaduna on a mission trip. Our prayer goes to him and all the other people that went in with him. We have our, our mommy, mommy Bagudu is there with him. And we have one of our Dickness, Dickness Yinka Akonwu. We also have over there, one of our brother, Moses Bako. Let's continue to pray for them. Our prayer is that 
God will prosper their journey. And very soon, we will have established in Kaduna the Victory Community Baptist Church. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus. Amen. This morning, we are looking at the topic, Cultivating Harmonious Relationship with Your Spouse. Now, before those who are not married will shut their mind, please listen. Hello? Before somebody in service will say, okay, I'm free. I don't need to take notes. Please, you need to take notes. Because this is you having opportunity to hear before you step in. Somebody wrote a book and said, before you say, I do. Hello? Before you say, I do. So you have the privilege of knowing some things before you say, I do. Hallelujah. So we are looking at cultivating harmonious relationship with your spouse. And the trust of this message this morning is that cultivating harmonious relationship demands submission from the wife and love from the husband. Cultivating harmonious relationship demands submission from the wife and love from the husband. The purpose of preaching this message this morning is to reveal attitude necessary for a lasting marital relationship. You see, we are in that era now that people find it very easy to say, I divorce you. For every kind of reasons, people want to put away their marriage. Why are you separating after 32 years? Irreconcilable differences. How were you reconciling it the whole 32 years? So we want to look at what will help us to continue. And also for those of us who are not married, we want to harm you with tools that will help you in making your choices. It's also to encourage spouses to be submissive to one another. To encourage spouses to love one another. And to grant understanding to young ones entering into marital relationships. So you have the ABC of what to do and what not to do before you get married. If I had known something when I was single, I think I would, I'm doing very good though. Don't, don't, don't think I, I'm enjoying my marriage. But I would have done better, in fact, greater. Because some things that I did not put in place then, I'm now rushing to put them in place now. So for those of us that you are not married now, hey, if I were you, I would not just take notes. I would download the message and listen to it over and over again. Praise the Lord. So this morning, the Lord will bless us as we listen in Jesus' name. Today, we will begin a new series, Flourishing in Our Family Relationships. There are various aspects of relationships, but our focus is on the family. God is interested in what goes on in our families. He initiated marriage relationship for the purpose of creating wonderful families. God brought about. See, marriage is not the idea of any man. Hello? Marriage is not a man's idea. Because the first man that he created was enjoying himself. He will jump with the monkeys. He will hunt with the lions. He will swim with the fishes. He was enjoying himself. And God looked at him and said, mm, at this rate Adam is going, it can never be well with him. So God said, I will make a helpmate. So it was God's idea. Listen to me and listen to me very well. You cannot run your marriage without consulting the author. Hello? You cannot. So God created marriage so that we can have wonderful families. Marriage is what creates families. Marriage is a fundamental bond between a man and a woman. You made a vow to love one another no matter the condition. But sometimes things get strained. Now, let me, let, me, let me quickly address some things about vows. Because nowadays, we are seeing a lot of things. 
for richer for richer, for better for best, for glory unto glorious. Listen to me, listen to me. Some of those who took those vows of for better for worse, they are still together. Are you listening? They took that vow for richer for poorer, they are still together. They took the vow in sickness and in health, they are still together. But some of those people that took for richer for richer, for better for best, for, where are they today? That means, see, listen, the issue of vow was a man's thing. Let me read this. The wedding vows, as we know them, originated in what is known as the Book of Common Prayers, a, litur a liturgical book used by the churches of the Anglican Communion. Originally published in 1549, under what then was the Church of England during the reign of Edward VI, the Book of Common Prayer was written by Thomas Cranmer, Bishop of Canterbury, although it was quickly followed by many editions. So this thing was written by a man. What was the one that God wrote? For this reason, a man shall leave his, his father and mother and shall... That's the wedding vow God wrote. And it's focus on what? The purpose. So whatever you want to say on that day, for, for younger, for old age, for, for beauty, for ugliness, for handsome, for whatever you want, it takes commitment. Are we together? It takes commitment. Hallelujah. So perhaps in your marriage, you have had a fight and you feel that you are drifting away. Or you may have simply reached a point where you realize that you need to improve the relationship. Marital relationship requires work and commitment. To keep your love for one another, strong, great effort, understanding, and patience, among other things, is needed to adjust and to improve in your marriage. I tell you, the institution that is called marriage is the only one that on the first day that you start, they certify you. Immediately they join you here. They give you what? Is that how they certify doctors? Talk to me, church, now. Is that how you become an engineer? Korean will not give you a certificate now. Other institutions will not. But marriage, God is saying, hmm, as long as you work with me, I will secure you. You are certified. So tell somebody beside you, whether they are married or not, married or not, tell them marriage is a hard work. Because you are entering into a profession where you are certified before you practice. Are we together? I believe that God will help us this morning. In our text, Paul writes to the church in Colossae about harmonious living in the family. You will enjoy this institution if you live as believers that are broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. So everything I'll be saying this morning has to do with believers who are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Believers who are what? Under the influence of the Holy Spirit. How many of you, you have seen drunkards before? We don't see them nowadays because of the cost. People don't get drunk nowadays. Though. It's expensive now to get drunk. So you don't see many of them. But in those days when you see drunkards, they are under serious influence. A drunkard will see a fort, a, a, a 24-wheeler trailer coming and say, me and you, you will, you will have to move. You will move for me. Why? It's under influence. So what we are talking about this morning are, is for those who are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's you are not doing it according to your willpower. 
but you are doing it according to the spirit that is influencing you. And the Lord will help us to do so in Jesus' name. So two things to say this morning. Number one is wives, submit to your husband. Verse 18 of our text. It says, wives, submit to your own husband as it is fitting in the Lord. Submission to husband is something that is expected in the first century. Um, first century and it's the same thing that is expected of every Christian woman Paul highlighted this further in verses such as Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 to 24 Titus chapter 2 verse 4 to 5 and so on to reveal its importance for the Christian wives now what does it mean when we say wives submit what does it mean when it is said, wives submit? Now, Paul writing was writing based on military terms. This word submit is a word that was borrowed from the military, literally meaning to be under in rank. Are we together? To be under in rank. It marks the way that organization like the military is is ranked one you have generals you have colonels you have major you have captains you have sergeants you have privates those are the level of ranks and what is demanded of everyone under that level is submission it does not matter if the private is smarter if he is wiser if he is more intelligent than the general what is expected of him? We are not speaking. Submit. It does not matter the rank. It's not submitting to that man because of any other thing, but because that is the rank that is given. So therefore, wives do not submit to their husband because he's handsome. You don't submit to your husband because he's wealthy. You don't submit to your husband because he's intelligent. But you submit to him because he's the husband by rank. Are we getting somewhere this morning? So the submission we are looking at is the idea of submission doesn't have anything to do with someone being smarter or wiser. Anyone who has served in the military and our church is blessed. At least we have some men who are in the armed forces. And they understand, you, you see, there, there's something they say in that formation. They say, obey first. <laughs> you dare not complain, sir. That one is civilian that says, be, complain. In the, in the armed forces, obey first. So that's what is expected of a wife. Submit. Therefore, submission is part of what helps the home. We've watched football matches, and there's somebody, apart from the coach, there's somebody on the field that is called the team captain. Are we together? At times, you see the team captain. Though the coach is there, you see the team captain saying, Why? Why do they submit to him in that team? Because he's the captain. So that's the reason why wives should submit. The submission we are talking about is voluntary. Hello, church. It's a humble, loyal, loving deference and cooperation between you and your spouse. Submission does not mean inferiority. Women, listen to me and let's hear this very well. That you submit to your husband does not mean that you are inferior. Forget what people see outside though. And be careful the kind of counsel you hear. Somebody will tell you, eh? You mean David is doing this with you? Me, I can't take it to... Uh, are you in their house? 
Do you know what she's doing? Submission is voluntary. That's you are saying, I recognize your leadership in this home. So I take my place under you. That all may be well in this home. That's what submission is all about. And I've discovered, I can tell you stories of women who have all it takes. In fact, some of them are in, in positions that they are directors. Directors in their company. That's, this is a woman that once he walks in from, from the car park, you say, Monsa, Monra, welcome, ma, welcome, ma, welcome. Ma. But when she gets home, that role is reversed. Why? Somebody says submission. So that there can be peace. Let me give one testimony. There was, when we were still in Lagos, many, many years ago, there was this lady. She's a pharmacist. She has her own pharmaceutical outlets, many of them. Her husband is a teacher. If I mention the name of the pharmacy, many of you that have been in Lagos, you cannot miss that pharmacy. But this woman, when it comes to serving the man, she will kneel down to put, graduate, she will kneel down to put the food on the table, wait on the man, school teacher, secondary school teacher. But she will submit totally. After a while, as a result of that submission, I'm not saying you must kneel down to serve your husband. In fact, the last time my wife knelt down to feed me was during our marriage. <laughs> I don't know why we do those things. <laughs> so, she kept on doing that, and because she honored her husband, see, this thing started speaking forth in this man's life. And before you know it, in Ministry of Education, the man started experiencing growth. Started growing, started growing, started growing. I don't know where he is now, but if he has not retired, he will probably be a director. Allow that man to play his role. Are we together? Submission, it is willingly. Submit to your husband. Apostle Paul put it very clearly in our text that submission to your husband is a matter of God's ordained hierarchy. It's not the idea of any man, but that's how God ordained it. You are to submit to your own husband because he is the head. You are to submit to your own husband in everything. We'll look at that very soon. Now, the scripture did not just say that you should submit, but in that same verse, it said, as it is fitting to the Lord. As it is what? Fitting to the Lord. There are many interpretations that people have given concerning this as it is fitting unto the Lord, depending on the side of view that they support. Interpretation that favors the husband says that as it is fitting to the Lord means that as the Lord, as you yield everything unto the Lord without questioning, so must every woman yield to the, their husband without questioning. But that will mean idolatry. That means you are taking the same glory that belongs to God as a man in your house. So as it is, as it is fitting, that's to the extreme concerning the men folks. Now, the second interpretation that some people gave as for as it is fitting unto the Lord is that for the women now, said, the Bible is saying, I should submit to you as long as you do that which is pleasing to the Lord. And I am the one that will determine what is pleasing to the Lord. So if it is pleasing to the Lord that you must buy me when is August? Some few months to come. If it's fitting, it will be fitting unto the Lord if you buy me that wrapper for August. What do they call it now? 
August meeting. So I will submit to you. That is as it is fitting unto the Lord. That one too is to an extreme. So what does it mean to say that you should submit to your own husband as it is fitting unto the Lord? It means, wife, submit yourself to your own husband because it is part of your duty to the Lord, because it is an expression of your submission to the Lord. Submit simply means as it is pleasing unto the Lord. Therefore, as it is fitting means that for wives, submit to your husband as part of your Christian life. You cannot say you are a believing wife if you are not submitting. It's part of your Christian life. Submission according to the word of God is part of your Christian life. As it is fitting also means that the command to submit is complete, completely out of your realm. You see, we are not all wired the same. There are some women, right from the time they were growing up, they are wired to lead. You just know that this one, by age five, they are already deciding for the family what we will eat tonight. The mother is there, the father is there, there are other elder ones there, but this one that is just age five, we say, mommy, tonight we are going to eat fried rice. That's the leadership quality in that person. Mommy, I'm going to, I'm going to be a surgeon. They have that innate ability in them. But when it comes to submission, it has nothing to do with your personality. You see, you know I'm forceful. Mm -mm. It does not have anything to do with submission. You know I like to have your mate. No, it doesn't have anything. So when it comes to submission, it has nothing to do with your nature or your personality. You must submit. Are we together? As it is fitting also means that this has nothing to do with your husband's intelligence, giftedness, or capability. It has to do with you honoring Christ. So whether your husband is wealthy or poor, you need to submit. Now, this also has to do with our younger one. This means that every woman should take great care in how she chooses her husband. Listen to me, those of us that are not married. Mark this as your point one. If you know you can't respect that man, don't marry him. Hello? Don't marry him. Don't marry him for his wealth. Don't marry him because he's handsome. Don't marry him because um, he's tall, broad shoulder. Don't marry him because he comes from a well-known family. Marry him because you can respect him. Let me tell you, the journey of marriage is the most surprising journey in life. Hello? The journey of marriage is the most unpredictable journey in life. That's why you need to anchor it in God. You need to anchor it in God. Oh, that man is handsome today. Ah, God forbid. I won't say it. That man has a very good job today. Ah, fine. You need to anchor it in that submission. You need to think for yourself. This man I'm about to marry. Do I respect him? Do I honor him? So the Bible is telling us this morning that wives should submit to their own husband. Now, if I end it this way, some men here will get home and quote me. Did you hear what Pastor Latte said? Did you hear? He said what? He said what? Oh yeah, your salary. Did you hear what Pastor Latte said? What did he say? What did he say? 
Oh, yeah, that, that property that is in your name. So, listen, there are exceptions to submission. Hello? Okay, some people thought I've weaponized them. <laughs> okay. This is, uh, you, 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 this is the safety, uh, what do they call that thing that they put in pressure pot? That thing. S um, pressure relief, safety valve. This is the safety valve on submission. Number one, when your husband asks you to, as the wife to sin, please don't submit. And my dear, you see that things are hard. And then there's a friend of mine who is a drug dealer. Just take it to Korea. Eh? Co what? Don't so in fact, come and report him to Reverend Bagudu. So if he asks you to sin, don't do what? When the husband is medically incapacitated, is insane or under the influence of mind-altering substance, don't submit. After the man is high, now say, ah, my dear, as things are now, sign that uh, on life insurance. Sign it, let's, let's collect the money. Wait when his eyes is clear. And then ask him again. So when the man is under influence, please don't submit. Again, when the husband is violent, and physically threatening the wife, the wife may not submit. You see, I need to tread softly here, but I need to tell you the truth. Any relationship that has gone to the point of violence and threat to the life of the woman, I beg you, Move. Uh -huh. Run. Hello? Did you hear me? This is Africa. This is Nigeria. If you die, that man may never go to prison. No. He may never go to prison. And before you know it, if you are not careful, before they bury you. <laughs> Do you know that in some culture, they will say that a woman should come and sleep with the man? so that the dead wife will not come. Ah, you don't know. So if it gets to the point of violence, to the point that it's becoming life-threatening, Ron, no. are we together this morning? When the husband breaks the marriage bond by adultery, the wife needs to call to question that relationship. Are we here? Please, let's be serious about marriage. Marriage is a serious thing. So one of the things that we say in the vow, what is one of those things that we say? Forsaking all others. Abby? And clinging to you. Abby? So why are you clinging to another? So submission has safety valve. Hello, church. Everybody is getting quiet on me. So women submit. But when you submit, submit with your senses. Be aware of where is this submission leading to. You see, Men are not wired the same as women. There are some men that can actually take care of their finances. Yes, they, they, can, they can really package things and help the family. There are some that are not so good and they need a financial manager. I will not lie to you, I'm one of those second parts. Yeah, I'm in that second part. Because before I got married, when I collect my salary, I'll put it in my wallet, put it in my back pocket. Spending continues. Yes, so where it ends, we we'll wait for next month.
impulse buying, I did there. So I spend my money anyhow. I do things on impulse. But God gave me a, a good checkmate. Eh? You see, there are helpmates and there are checkmates. He gave me helpmate and checkmate. So when I, in my eagerness to do some things, she will allow me to speak. Oh. And then she will, after a while, she will now say, have you considered? Let me share one testimony. I got promoted at work. And there is this fat annual uh, housing allowance that came. We were living in two-bedroom boys' quarter. And as this fat housing allowance came, I said, babe, now they will know. We need to move from here. And then I described the place around Ogba. That's where the boys are. Say yes. She said yes. Oh. So my head was swelling. I said yes. By the time we move in, we, we will not go to all this flat. We will rent a duplex. Say yes. And then that night went. And then the next day, I think about a week after, now said, don't you think that if we put this huge sum into buying a property, that can help us? But I've just been promised. Money will come now. Money will come. There's no problem. Let's shift from here. He said, hey, it's today that we know. We don't know what is coming in the future. Hey, let's tie this thing down. Grudgingly, I agreed. Today, that property is still existing. The job has gone. So, what am I saying here? You need somebody, men, you need somebody that can be beside you. So, while they submit, you see, the submission of a woman makes a man to cooperate. Many a times, women don't understand why God said this. You see, men, let, 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 me, let me give you this one for free. Men like to dominate. Men like to rule. Men like to show power. But when a woman submits, go and, ask, go and read your Bible. Every decision that great kings have made, who, who channeled their decision? David said today, by the time I finished the house of that man that did not give him food, um, the husband of Abigail, what's his name? Naba. He said, by the time I finish his house, not a single male will remain there. And David was going. And there came this woman with submission and humility. He said, my Lord. David was fuming. He said, why do you want to stain your hand with blood? That man is a foolish man. Let it not be that, my Lord, you avenge yourself. Let the Lord have submission. Before you know it, David that was raging, that today blood will flow. I will show this man that I'm a warrior. David ended up eating snacks. <laughs> and talking to the woman. And if not because of you, I would have killed this man in submission. Wives, let me tell you. Allow your man to be a man. But in submission, you can begin to channel that strength and move him. Many things I would have done. Oh. Many, many things. There was a time I came into one money. I wanted to buy television that we covered. I'm living in a rented apartment. Oh. I wanted to buy a TV that we covered the whole world. Why? When you see premiership in that kind of TV, you are like there. Yeah. 
and subtly, I think we ended up buying 20 inches. <laughs> See, you, you can control that home by submission. Allow the man to have his say. Eh? Allow him to say it. And then in submission, let me, let me lend you one other one. You see this place? That's the control unit of a man. <laughs> I will leak your secret. <laughs> As you are sitting together, just be stroking that place and be gently telling him, my dear, the owner of my head, the one that is my crown, the most handsome man in the world. There is no one like you. You see that thing we want to do? He said, uh huh. Let's follow it this way. He said, uh huh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In submission, you can take that home. Are we together? In submission, you can take that home. In submission, you can take that home. I believe the Lord will help us to do this in Jesus' name. The word is fitting means it is appropriate, it is proper. It means that in the Lord, you recognize the Lord. It means that that is what God wants you to do. And as you do so, it is well with your home in Jesus' name. Now to the other part. He said, husband, love your wife. Husband, love your wife. In verse 19. Husbands, love your wife. And do not be bitter towards them. Apostle Paul writes from the background and the culture where love is largely absent in the Hellenistic and Jewish marital relationship. You see? Thank God that you marry for love now. In those days... Some people don't get to know their husband until the day they are going to get married. Somebody will come and do all the negotiation, and then when they are taking you, you are asking them, where's my husband? Don't worry, you will see your husband very soon. And then when you get there, you now see the man. Whether it's tall, short, fat, thin, that man is your husband. And before you know it, love starts to grow. Praise the Lord. So, Paul was coming from this culture. Hence, he admonished the husband for the need to love their wives. The importance is seen in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 to 33, where the word love is used six times. He wants it to be well absorbed by the man. There must be a distinct between believers and unbelievers because love is our watchword. See, one of the things that is very difficult for men, especially African men, especially some Nigerian men, is that we don't know how to express love. We don't understand it. We don't know how to show it. Some people are able to, but not everybody. It's not something that easily comes to mind. If I don't love you, will you still be in my house? No, that's not love. You say, I don't love you. I bought you three cars. You say, I don't love you. Everything, I opened a shop for you. What else do you want? Uh -uh. Th those are, th those are expressions. The real thing is what the woman wants. For that woman, ask her, what's your love language? How many of you have read that book? Some women, their love language is not gift to. So you are buying gift. The woman is wondering, see the house is unkept. I'm very busy. He can't help me. Some women, their love language is help. As you see me, please, Siri, can you stop that? Some people, their love language is help. They need your assistance. 
Some women, their love language is just for you to be with them and be there. So, some women like touching. That's not for any other thing. Just you come, you, you touch her shoulder. You come, you squeeze her hand. To them, it's okay. And some is gift. If you are sitting there with her till tomorrow and you don't bring gift, this woman no one does not love me. So you need to understand the love language of your wife. I know my own. If I mob the house, oh boy. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> you see, help is what she needs. So you need to know the love language. And the Bible is telling us this morning that we need to love our wives. What does it mean? He said, in Ephesians, it says, as Christ loved the church, husbands are to love their wives just as Christ loved the church. Husbands are to love their wives sacrificially. You are to love your wife sacrificially. What does that mean? You need to deny yourself so that some things you can give to your wife. February just passed now, Abby. How many of our men, you remember, I'm not saying that February 14 is a must. I don't want to stretch it so far. At least that's a significant date. Did you buy gift for your wife? The men are not talking. No. Okay, wives, did you receive gifts February 14? <laughs> a lot of heads, we are doing that. Some are even looking. Oh, yeah, now. <laughs> See, why did God say that men should love? You need to ask yourself. It's because it's not common for a man to express himself. It's not common. That's not how we are wired. We are not wired to show emotions. To show passion. You know this thing, public display of affection. We are not wired like that. There was a time there was this joint meeting between MMU and WMU. And we went to a couple's house. And they said, okay, the next activity now is all wives sit on the lap of your husband. If you see eyes. <laughs> One man even voiced it out said, is that why we are here? Why? We are not just wired that way. So the Bible is telling us, take note, love. And how do you love? Love sacrificially. Show compassion. When the woman is sick, can you sacrifice your time? You see, that's why some of you, that you are crying, let me have voice, let me have voice. Hey. In your old age, may God help you. May your boys have girls that will take you as their father. Else, you will see money, but that attention. Men are wired that way. That's just how we are. So the Bible is saying compulsorily you should do what? Love. So today, you have an assignment, men. How do they call it down here? Show love. Um, sister, show, show workings. Show workings. Men, do what? Show love. Do something as an expression of love. You know who I will ask whether you do it this week? is the wives. I will ask. I will tell the wives to stand up. Every woman in church, stand up. If your husband show walking, sit down. The ones that will remain standing, husband, that day you will show walking. Praise the Lord. What kind of love are we talking about? We are talking about agape love. Sacrificial love. A love that is beyond your ability. 
a love that you must show whether you like it or not, a love that you must continue to express. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28, it also says, as their own body, that's you love your wife as Christ loved the church, you also love your wife as, as your own body. As you love your own body. You see, I, I will want to take that statement a bit further because not all men love their own body. Hello? Are we here? Not all men love their own body. You see, your wife, your wife is a refined product. You, you were made from dust, eh, from clay. But your wife is a refined product. So you, you may leave your hair bushy and your beard unkept, but your wife, she's a refined product. So if I say you should love your wife as you love your own body, it will be very risky. So love your wife beyond as you love your own body. Are, are you with me? You see, there was a man that, that came to complain one day, and he said, I don't know why. My son and my daughter, they are in school. But when I give my son 20000 and give my daughter 20000 before two weeks, my daughter is asking for more. You know what we told the man? He said they are not the same. How much does it take to, to barb your hair? 500 Go and make air. We say put that one as one. Put it. The number two, your son may need just three boxers. But your daughter does not wear only top, only button. She wears top. And except you don't want your daughter to be hygienic and to live well, she needs at least two weeks quantity of that top and bottom underwears. Say, make it two. Number three, your son may take his bath and not rub cream and walk out. But your daughter, she will have a cream for the hair, a cream for the face, a cream for the body, and the hand. Their hand must be tender. And then your son does not need perfume. Your, body, your daughter will need roll-on. We need body spray. We need this. By the time we finish, the man said, I didn't see it that way. I said, see it now. So why am I saying this? Husband, love your wife more than you love your body. Because me now, if I go there now, 500, I've done it, and it's in two weeks. Your wife may go and do the one of 3,000, and then she's doing like this. There's no 3,000. Uh -huh. Husband, you see why you must love your wife more than you love? They say no 3,000 again, no. 5,000 now. Ah. Okay. Serial. I'll walk you out of the service. So, now, listen to me. If the weaver will cost this amount, and then they say 5,000 is just for the making, for the fixing. Aha. Uh -huh. God help us. So, God will provide. Take care of your wife very well. Hmm? Because the day that she does that fixing, pray that it does not rain. And water touches it. The next day she will lose that 5,000. I'm in the business. I understand this thing. So, Paul is writing in Ephesians 5.28. He said, love them as you love your own body but practically love them than you love your own body. Be well aware that there are things that are women's need, and they must have it. And I know our men in this church, kudos, you are doing well. No, our men are doing well. You see, you cannot see yourself. I can see you. See, mommy, See my brother's wife. 
Si docteur. Si sister Nkechi. You see, our women don't have wrinkles in this church. Why? The men are walking. <laughs> Hallelujah. The men are walking. So do more. Help me tell a man beside you. Tell the man, do more. Tell that man, do more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the next thing that Paul wrote here, it says, do not be bitter towards them. Do not be harsh with your wives. Do not be bitter towards them. Husbands are to be careful not to get angry with their wives. Why? The way women are wired. They can talk. Women can do what? They can talk. And at times, you see, when they say things, they, they say it in a way that hurts the man. They don't really mean it. No, they don't. <laughs> you see... <laughs> <laughs> you see, they don't really mean it. But most of the time, you have done something and, see, physically, she cannot match you. But verbally, she will run you down. So, you have done something and she's hot and she's looking for one word. And when she throws that one word, it will hit you. Uh, eh. They are calling men. You two, you are... <laughs> There are times when there is this intense fellowship. You see, we call it intense fellowship here. We don't call it quarrel or argument. When there is this intense fellowship, your wife may have said some things. Say, it's not your fault. Of all the suitors, which position you did? <laughs> what you should say at that time is, if I'm not the best, why did you choose me? And end it there. So, if your wife, for one reason or the other, has said something, you know, at times, women, we are preset. Now, one thing, we, can, we only do one thing. Every man, check it. We only set out for one goal and achieve it. Because that's how we are wired. But the men, <laughs> you, you see, as a man, you see a lady, and say, hi, babe. The minute I saw you, I lost my breath. <laughs> you are the oxygen that can make me to survive. Now, as you said that, to you as a man, it has ended though. For the woman, she has started a process. If I marry this man, is this how the head of my children will look like? <laughs> how many children are we going to have? Will this man be able to take care of? What have you said? Just one word though. I like you. The woman is already thinking of the wedding day. The day they will give birth. How their grandchildren will survive. How? So when you speak at times to a woman and she responds to you. She's responding from a, a, a perspective that is not even visible to you. If I had been angry, we would have been very, very poor. And we will have things that, are, that does not have second-hand value. Because who will buy that television when you need money? Or when, when I can't pay for the rent? of that duplex, how will I survive? So 
at times, the, 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 the Bible is telling us here that do not be bitter towards your wife. That means it takes understanding. Understand that. You need to read that. Understand that. And I believe there's no man seated here that your wife has not said something that annoyed you. If she has not said something that annoyed you, pray. Don't think you are perfect. Pray. Because what the man, woman has just decided is that continue. I will make my own plan. Just continue. If she has not said anything that has made you angry or offended you, that means she's telling you, keep going. I will make, make my own plan how to survive. Just keep going. Because there are times that men want to do something and their wife will stand their ground. Hey, this is your friend that you are following. We will see the end of it. Say, my friend, we've been friends from, from school. Said the last time you saw him was 15 years ago. This man is not the same man you knew before. He said, ah, it's not the day EFCC will come and pick you. The woman will say, did I not tell you? So we need to. But what are we saying here? He said, do not be offended. That means we need a lot of forgiveness as men. From now, uh, can you forgive in advance? Can you come to that time that no matter what this woman will do, you have my forgiveness? Hello? Can we get to that point as men? That no matter what this, after all, you offend God now. Don't you offend God? And he has forgiven you ahead. Can you see? The reason why people break up their home is because they've not given enough latitude for forgiveness. You can imagine me as a pastor. A woman was caught in adultery by her husband. The woman ran to church to meet me and said, Pastor, I'm in trouble. My, wife, my husband just walked in on me with his friend. So now I don't know what to do. I was just looking at her, not even knowing where to start. Shortly, the man walked in. And the man was saying, why are you running? I said, I've forgiven you. Let's go back home. Me. A pastor was now asking the man, are you sure? <laughs> that man taught me a solid lesson in marriage. He said, when I was making my commitment, my vows, I already told myself that no matter what this woman will do, she has my forgiveness. Today, they are still together. They are friends, they are friends of our family. They are still together till today. Each time I see that man, I, I say, I, I never start. The man said, why are you running? I said, I've forgiven you. Let's go home. Pastor, ordained minister of God, say, are you sure? He said, Pastor, I made that vow. So what Paul is writing here is that no matter what, do not be bitter towards your wife. You see, it takes two for a divorce to take place. And the reason why we are having it now on a daily basis is because the two, they don't want to get to this point of forgiving. And you need to hear some reasons why some homes are separated. He bought a car. And he didn't put my name. And therefore, I'm going. Did he tell you that you can't have the key? Let him buy it in his name now, and you, you keep the key. And every time you want to use it, in fact, target him so that he will know who owns the car. Target him. 
As he's planning to go out, take the key, go. When you come back, you say, ah, you need a, I, I did see now, I didn't know that you needed the car. That's why you should buy two. Make your home fun. Hmm? Men, I'm talking to Ross this morning. Make your home what? Fun. Make excuses for your partner. I end with this this morning. We need to get rid of all bitterness, of all rage and anger, and be willing to forgive. There are too many toxic emotions that is up and running in the society. Please try and secure your home. When argument comes up, which we all see, if you don't have this kind of talk in your marriage, you are deceiving yourself. That means you are not communicating. That means you are not looking for each other's progress. When you try to push me, like they try to push me, every morning, wake up, do exercise, exercise, every morning, do this. It's pushing, and there are times that I just want to sleep. It's good for your health. You need to... And once in a while, we get into that argument. You said it's good for what? Is it my health? It's my health now. So, those kind of discussion will come up. What do you need to do? Give allowance. Give allowance. So, as wife, you respect your husband. As husband, you love your wife. As wife, submit to your husband. As husband, sacrificially love your wife. And you will see that your home will be the tabernacle where God wants to reside. A couple once had an argument. And the husband was angry. He said, you, this woman, you are a prostitute. I hate you. You are a prostitute. And the woman replied, said, yes, so I'm a prostitute. But I have only one customer. And you are the customer. <laughs> and they burst into laughter. See how they, they diffused the tension. See, the devil is out for homes now. Your home will not be his target. So protect your home. Beloved, God is interested in your family. You belong to the larger family, the church of God. Jesus died for the church. He wants spouses, families to live in harmonious harmony with each other. As we partake of the family meal, the communion, let us rededicate ourselves to God and ask for God's forgiveness in areas we are falling short and grace to submit and to love our spouses. By the mystery of the communion, families will be restored in Jesus' name. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Can you, if you are married here and you are sitting by your spouse, can you just hold your partner? And say, Lord, I thank you for my partner. Can you just hold your partner? If you are a family, just hold your spouse. Hold your husband. Hold your wife. Give thanks to God for that home that he has built for you. Thank God for that home. Thank God for that home. Thank God that your home is secured in the Lord. If you are the wife, ask for grace to submit. If you are the husband, ask for grace to love. And if you are here, you are not married. Can you pray that prayer and say, Lord, give me a beautiful home. A home that will continually bring me joy. If you are the man, can you pray? Give me the home that I will always run to, that I will always be willing to come to.
Or adventure you are having challenges in your home. Can you ask that as you partake of this communion, that the grace of God will speak for you? Ask that the grace of God will speak for you. That whatsoever is the fountain of trouble, it will cease to flow. And if you can pinpoint the source of that trouble, can you address it and ask that the blood will speak against that source this morning. Ask that the blood of Jesus will speak against that source. Whatever is troubling my home, Father, you will arrest it. You will arrest it. You will arrest it. Whatever is speaking against my home, you will arrest it. Lift up your voice and thank God as we come to the communion table. Let our elders come forward, please. Let's continue to pray. Lord, as I partake of this communion today, let the blood speak forth in my home. No. Oh. 
from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your body that was broken so that ours can remain intact. Thank you because the breaking of your body caused us to experience entrance into grace. Lord, by the token of this element today, let your grace be poured out afresh on us in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, the resurrected body of Christ is without infirmity. Therefore, we use this element as a point of contact to that power that as we partake of it, whatever represents an infirmity within our body, let them be totally consumed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, our Father, because you have done this. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we partake of the body? In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We adore you. We magnify your name. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood that brought us salvation. Thank you for the blood that causes cleansing. Thank you for the blood that initiated a fresh relationship with the Father. By the token of this blood, let everything called limitation barrier be broken in the name of Jesus. By the blood, every curses were reversed. Lord God Almighty, as we partake of this blood, whatever represent a curse, a limitation, let them be reversed in the name of Jesus. By the blood, we were made whole. Whatever is the ache, the pain, the sickness, the disease, by the token of this blood, let there be healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' name. Then he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Shall we partake of the blood? Let's pass the cup to the aisle as our elders will collect. Shall we rise as we pray? Lift up your voice and call upon the name of the Lord. Ask that the body and the blood of Jesus will speak for you in this quarter and in this month. Open your mouth and pray. Ask that the blood will bring about healing. The blood will bring about the breakthrough. The blood will bring about the release. Ask that the blood will speak for you. I want you to pray this morning concerning your home. Whatever is that source of the trouble in that home, raise the blood as a token against that source. Ask that every troubler of my home, I plead the blood of Jesus against you. You shall no longer proceed. Open your mouth and pray. Whatever is that trouble, that challenge, Speak the blood, spill the blood, plead the blood over your home, plead the blood over your home. Finances that wants to cause limitation, plead the blood over your home. Resources that wants to cause limitation, plead the blood over your home. 
every limitation and embargo that is set against you. Bleed the blood now. Bleed the blood now. Bleed the blood now. Bleed the blood now. Ask that the Lord will be made manifest in your home. Every attack against my home, the blood puts an end to you. Every attack against my home, the blood puts an end to you. Is somebody praying this morning? I will have harmonious relationship with my spouse. I will have harmonious relationship with my partner. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you also pray this morning, my Father and my Maker? Whatever is the traits that is known in marriage concerning my home, concerning my bloodline, whatever is that negative trait, it shall not survive in my home. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. Put an end. In my home, there shall be no divorce. There shall be no separation. Is somebody praying and asking the Lord for help? The divorce rate in your family is constant tea. Ask that the Lord consigning you, it will not happen. Pray that your spouse will not die. Pray that the blood of Jesus will speak for you. The blood will sustain your home. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. This morning, specifically, you have a challenge in your home. And you are saying, Lord, I need your help. Or you have waited for so long. And it seems there is an embargo concerning marriage, concerning you. You see it happening for people around you and it's like it's not happening for me and you want to say father i need this embargo to be lifted or there's something that you want to happen in your home and every effort to make it happen has proven abortive you can come out in faith this morning and say lord i come to your altar by this blood by this covenant by this communion let it be settled for me. If you are in that category, you can come out. Or you desire healing in your body. Or you have a special request. The altar is open for you. You can come forward. I believe that God has a solution for you this morning. Hallelujah. Open the floor gates in abundance and cause your
was young. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children beg bread. You are going to pray and say, my father and my maker, in this second quarter, whatever takes money to do, I will not lack it. Open your mouth and pray. You will supply for me. You will give me that which I need. For this second quarter, my provision shall be ready on time. Open your mouth and pray. Ask that the Lord will supply according to your his riches in glory. Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Thank you, my Father. Lord, you will supply all that I need according to your riches in glory. You will supply in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. It is written. With long life will I satisfy you. And I will remove far from you the diseases of the Egyptian. You are going to pray, Heavenly Father. By the token of your body and your blood, I receive sound health throughout this second quarter and beyond. Open your mouth and pray. Disease and infirmity will not have hold on me. It is written that you will take away the disease of the Egyptian. It will not have hold on me. In the name of Jesus, they will not have any hold on me. Disease and infirmity will not have hold on me. Whatever they call their name, there's a name that is above every other name. There's a name that is above every other name. I decree and I declare, let them flee. In the name of Jesus, thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. He says they shall come to you in one way, but they shall flee in seven ways. You are going to pray, Heavenly Father, every formation of the enemy against my flourishing this year, let them scatter in the name of Jesus. By the blood, let them scatter. Open your mouth and pray. Every formation of the enemy against my flourishing this year, I declare, let them scatter. Gather they may gather, but their gathering is all of me, said the Lord. Every gathering, every formation of the dark world against my breakthrough, against my flourishing, I command you to scatter. In the name of Jesus, I command you to scatter. In the name of Jesus, I command you to scatter. Scatter, scatter, scatter in the name of Jesus. I command every gathering against my breakthrough to scatter. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Esther chapter 5 verse 2 says, So it was, when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, that he, she found favor in his sight, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. Can you pray this prayer with me and say, My father and my maker, in the order of Esther, let the mark of favor rest upon me this second quarter. That wherever I show up, men will arise to help me. Open your mouth and pray. The mark of favor in the order of Esther, let it speak for me. Let it speak for me. Whether in my office, 
in business transaction at the marketplace let that same order let it work for me now Thank you, my Father. Let it work for me. Let it work for me. Let favor speak for me in this second quarter. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. <clears throat> Genesis 24 verse 60 says, And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands. And may your descendants possess the gate of those who hate them. Can you lift up your hand and say, My Father, the power for dominion rest upon me and my household. In this second quarter, we will reign in dominion. Open your mouth and pray. No one will be able to oppress you. Lord, we will reign in dominion by the reason of the blood. As for me and my household, we will possess the gate of those who hate us. We will reign in dominion. We will reign in dominion. We will reign in dominion. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, oh, to love living word that has established us on a solid foundation by this same word I declare over your people that in this second quarter you will shine forth I decree over you that everywhere you turn to Men who hold the key of finance, men who hold the key of resources, men who hold the key of means in this nation will submit unto you in the name of Jesus. In this second quarter, you will rest upon the platform of great men and you will become greater in the name of Jesus. I decree over you that as you go forth, the fire of God goes ahead of you. Consuming every consumable that wants to attack you. In the name of Jesus. By the rod of the prophet upon this house. I lay that rod upon you. I say you go out in peace. And you return in peace. No harm will befall you. In the name of Jesus by the token of the anointing upon the servant of God here I speak over your life that if you stretch forth your hand it will not return empty Amen. whatever you aim to achieve in this second quarter is done Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. as you go there is a power that comes upon a man 
that makes every other thing to answer to him. Abraham found himself at a place and everything that he needed gravitated towards him. I decree and I declare over your life, whatever is a need in this second quarter, receive it in the name of Jesus. I declare that in this second quarter, it will go down in testimony. That is a great quarter for you. In the name of Jesus, I open the door of prosperity because the hand of God has opened it. I open the door of favor because the blood of Jesus has opened it. I open the door of increase because the blood of Jesus has opened it. I decree and I declare over you that the empty tomb of Jesus will answer in your favor. In the name of Jesus, go and prosper. Go and flourish. In Jesus' excellent name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you enjoyed the sermon, can you clap your hands for Jesus? Amen. It was a beautiful sermon. But I want to move emotion. There should be an interactive se section. This one is just preaching. I was just laughing. There are some questions we need to ask Pastor Latte and ask the other pastors. So they should do it like a family. You understand? We enjoy ourselves. They are just preaching from here and now. We are just laughing. We can't even ask them. But when we ask them the questions from here, they will answer us. And we will answer ourselves. Praise the Lord. God will help us. Our marriages will not break. We will not find reasons to ask for divorce. In the name of Jesus. And those of us that are scared to marry, you will not be scared again to get married. Just open your heart and say, God, I can understand better. Eh? The marriage will come. There are ups and downs in marriage. But it's beautiful. Just tell yourself, I want to enjoy those things that they enjoy in marriage. And it will come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. Don't be scared. Because he failed your father, it will not fail you. Because he failed your mother, it will not fail you. Because he failed that brother, it will not fail you. Your case will be different. And you will see of the truth, God, marriage, sweet. If another life day again, I go marry this woman. I go marry this man. So shall be our testimony in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We have assignment next week. They are going to ask us questions. So mothers, wives, husbands, show working. Pastor was saying husband. The wives too still needs to show working. Have you not been so men? So wives, show working. Husbands, show working. They will ask all of us questions next Sunday. We have our assignment. Is everybody that will show working. Teach them how to show working and they will learn from you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do we have any first time I hear? Your first time of coming to church? Okay. We're all welcome. Tell the person next to you, you are welcome to church. Looking forward to seeing you again. Praise the Lord. Let's bring out our offerings. We have two offerings today. The first one is our designated offering, which is a regular offering we take every Sunday. Then the second offering is the missions offering. We do mission work in this church. We don't keep it to ourselves. When we have mission needs, we meet it. We don't need to call you to say we contribute. We already have the money to be spent. So please get your first offering and your second offering. And also get your tithe ready. Praise the Lord. Women's ministry will be meeting tomorrow in preparation of the Mother's Day for this year, 2024. Hallelujah. Our team this year says mothers has peacemakers. So they are helping us preach the sermon already. To be submissive, you need to be a peacemaker. Praise the Lord. So our team is mothers as a peacemaker. God will help us to always be peacemakers in the name of Jesus. So come 5 p.m. tomorrow. All of us, we need to be in church tomorrow, 5 p.m. There's Riaza today, immediately after the service. Women, wait behind, immediately after the service. Our Riazas will stay. Continue, those for the dance rehearsal and those for the choir rehearsal, we're all meeting after service. Please don't go home. 
our elders, our mothers, senior citizens, just sit around and encourage us. Laugh. When we see you around, we'll be happy to be celebrating Mother's Day. So don't run home. Don't say that for children, not for all of us. We are all mothers. We want to see you laugh at us. And some of our mothers, don't worry, you see them dance. These seniors, they will be the ones to dance for us that day. Don't worry. And you will enjoy God. You will enjoy us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Part 220, I will be meeting next week, Sunday, by 4 p.m., the wedding bells, wedding bells, wedding bells. Hallelujah. It's our time to rejoice. Our sister Faith and our brother Richard will be getting married this Saturday at Obricom. This Obricom is not the one here. Che? It's the one in Omoko. So don't go and enter motor and take boat and say you're going to Obricom. It's not the one in Ajib Road. It's in Omok. Because some of us are already thinking that we will just not be here. It's not here. So know where we are going to. It's in Omok. And the both of them are from Woji Satellite Church. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. It's an in-house thing, so we're adding to ourselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray for them, that God will grant them breakthrough in Jesus' name. Our sister blessing and our brother, Dabotubo. Brother Dabotubo is our member. The sister we are getting out from another church. Hallelujah. We are going to take one from that side to join to us. So by next Sunday, we'll be having... Um, Two. No. One. So our 10% in room, I see. One has come out of it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the pastor will present them to us by the course of the service. Praise the Lord. Foundation class, foundation class, foundation class. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. We started it very well this year. The first people that started this year, they finished their class. Am I correct? We are correct, Abby. You've had your interaction section with the lead pastor. And some people will be baptized next month, May. The second phase starts next Sunday. Foundation class. It's not when you finish, you sit down, no. You move to the next level. Dr. Daramola, is that not so? Move to the next level. Don't say, I, I know it's a top of the church. It's not on. You are just, this is pre-degree. Pre now you want to start the degree program. So you have finished that one. The, okay, the next one is discover. Yes, you have known as a believer what to do. You have to discover yourself. More things about yourself. So go for discovery. Don't say I'm finished. You are finished, yes. We will induct you. But before the induction, start the next class so that the spirit will just be going like that. If you go and stop, it will continue to be hard. So after now, the classes have started, Sha. They've started. So after now, pick your book. Go upstairs. Your classes begins. If you know you've not done your own, what we're saying is you've been... A member of this you've been coming to church you've been worshiping with us but you've not gone through the foundation class you need to go through the foundation class so next week sunday immediately after second service the class begins the book is that much against that with me 200 naira 200 naira please get involved be a part of this family and god will bless all of us in jesus name praise the lord hallelujah Praise the Lord. If you are here with your tithe or you've transferred it, please can you come forward? It's time to give our tithe and of tithe unto the Lord. Please come forward. You have transferred it or you have it with you. Speak a word unto God concerning how he has given you the power to make wealth also thank him for the grace that he has given unto you to remain obedient to his word also express your desire that you want it to be bigger and better than this as you are asking God open more channel of blessings unto me Jesus name we pray Heavenly Father we thank you thank you because from you all blessings flow thank you for how you have blessed your children even in this period at this very time you did not make anything to be too difficult for them to achieve 
Thank you, our Father, for blessing the resources of their hands. Thank you for enlarging their coast. Now they have brought their commitment unto you. They have said, Father, because I trust you, I bring this my commitment. Lord, I ask that you receive it in the name of Jesus. I ask that as the hand that stretched forth in giving, let the hand return with blessings in the name of Jesus. Secure all that has to do with them, O oh God. Let them continue to dwell in plenty in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, because you will protect and preserve them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we all rise as we sing the doxology together? the Lord. We'd like to call on our brother and our sister Blessing and Dabo Tubo, William West, to come forward as we bless them as they prepare for their wedding ceremony next week. Oga, go back. Go back. Go back. Chai. <laughs> Uh -huh. Go with your wife. Ah, see the way wife you love me. Uh -huh. You see the way you care for me. You carry my matter for your head. You watch over me. You know they carry me, they play. Hallelujah. We thank God for what He is set to do. Don't worry, we will talk after. I will give you the full manual. Because uh, as I call you, you just took off. You, from next week, you can't take off like that. Too. So, bro, just, just see me. I will download the. Praise the Lord. By Saturday, there will be tying the knot at um, Anglican Church, St. Thomas Anglican Church, Maltu Dio. So, church, let's stretch forth our hands and bless this one. Let's pray for them that their home will be on the solid rock that is Jesus. What a timely message that they will abide by the words they have heard today that there will be submission and there will be love in their home. Let us also pray for them that they will be in church all the days of their life. They will not just wait in church and stay out of church. Let's pray that they will continue to dwell in the house of God where the word of God will continue to purify them. Let's also pray that 
all that they need for that day to be a glorious day that the Lord will supply. As Jesus was at the wedding at Cana of Galilee, we invite the Lord into your wedding on that day. You will not run short. You will not fall into shame. The hand of the Lord will supply all that you need. In the name of Jesus, your home shall be a blessing. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we bless your son and your daughter. We thank you for the day that you brought them together. We commit them into your hand as they start the journey coming from next week. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will be their companion. You will be their assurance. You will be the one that will continually speak into their home. You will be the fountain that will never run dry concerning all that they need to set up a glorious home, my father your presence shall continually supply we give you praise and we give you glory that this home shall not be recorded among the statistics of divorced home in the name of jesus therefore we set you in your journey go and prosper in jesus wonderful name we have prayed amen So we'll see them on Sunday for Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Okay, we'll have choir administration while we collect the mission offering. Can we rise as we do that? Abasi ya 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 o, by the grace of God will be returning this week so let's keep him in our prayers and all the other delegates will be returning with him let's also continue to pray this is the month of convention let's pray concerning the convention as well the Lord will continue to be with us as we do so in Jesus name can you prophesy into this month speak forth into the month that which you want the Lord to do, place a demand upon it. If he has freely given us Jesus, what else will he not give you? 
place a demand upon that blood, place a demand upon the blood body. In Jesus' name we pray. I see some of us, I perceive that some of us, we are praying a general prayer. Can you be specific? Lord, I want this like this, as this. Place a demand now. Be specific so that when it happens, you know that this is what I ask of the Lord. Anna said, if you will give me a child, a male child, then I will bring him back unto you. So when the child came as a male, he knew that this is my answer. Be specific. You want that admission? You want it in this college? You want this course? Place a demand upon it. You want a business, this type of business, with this kind of income, place a demand upon it. My God can do it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Lord Jesus, like Nehemiah, we come before you this morning. We say we have boasted in your name. And therefore, we cannot be put to shame. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Consigning every demand that you have made upon the blood of Jesus. Let the answer come swiftly in the name of Jesus. By the hand that is stretched forth and can never be turned back. The hand of the Lord that prevails. Walk this week. Walk this month in that glory of the Lord in the name of Jesus. By the mercies of God that causes men to show mercy upon others. I place that mercy mark upon you. That wherever you turn up, people will have compassion upon you. To help you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over your life that this month of April shall be all joy and all celebration in the name of the Lord Jesus. Losses shall be far from you. Havoc shall be far from you. Limitation shall be far from you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless your name. And I say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen.